Thank you once again for joining us today at Matoka TV Studio. All right, in today's video, our Father in the Lord, Apostle Arame Osai, disclose um, a truth that will really bless and transform the body of Christ to the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. I would like you to watch this clip, this video, to the end to get a clear understanding of every truth revealed by the God's servant. And let your heart be open to receive this message so that you can apply them into your life. Thank you. Young husbands, young wives, ladies and guys that are preparing for marriage. Now it's it's a, it's an it's it's an unfortunate situation when you find a lady that is expecting that somebody will be interested in her, refusing to work on her character. Men can get married at the age of 60, 65, 74. But the cycle of a woman and the cycle of a lady is different. There is a particular window that if you exceed, it will, be, it will take prayers, petitions, it will take supplication to change the course of things. So ladies need to be more careful in making destiny choices as it has to do with accepting a life partner. If a marriage contract goes sour, it's a lady that suffers most. It's actually more blessed for you to remain single than for you to be found in a marriage contract that is sour. And that's the reason for the investment that we're doing here. Hallelujah. That's the reason for the investment. I came up with uh, a few wise sayings. These are wise sayings. <laughs> you know, if you gather a little experience in life, you can condense a lot of principles into wise sayings. Proverbs. So I came to give out some proverbs. You see, the nature of these proverbs I want to dole out. The, the, some of the proverbs are instructive. Some of the proverbs are corrective. Some of the proverbs provide deeper insight on the subject. But I came with a few proverbs to help us out. First proverb. A real man, a real man, a real man gives a lady a better home than the one she came from. You see, every lady is in a home. If you are going to fulfill what it takes, to be a chartered husband you must bear in mind the fact that you are trying to provide a better home for the woman that you are bringing into your ecosystem that's a vision this proverb is a visionary proverb when i got married to my wife my wife was in a hurry to change her son name and be a my own in the hall. She was the only child for 15 years. Parents of very learned people. She began to receive international exposure from when she was young. Hallelujah. But 
before we got married, one of the things she wanted was to change that name, that son name. <laughs> because a wise man will always provide a better home for a lady, much more than the home she came from. Now, in order to, for you to achieve this, there are a lot of things that you need to be sensitive about. Hallelujah. Now, if by any means you get fall in love with a lady that likes God, the person already likes God, the person loves God, the person is working with God. Most of the time, most of the time, the major challenge that a lady will have in her home is that uh, the, the environment may want to place restrictions on the extent to which you find liberty to exercise the convictions of, as touching her purpose. So the environment, you, you see, when we talk about a better home, it doesn't necessarily mean more money. It may mean more liberty for the expression of core matters. It may mean more partnership. It may mean a scenario where somebody believes in your abilities and is not threatened by their expression. Because there, there will always be the possibility of comparison. Where I am now, is it better than where I'm coming from? In fact, many times I need to remind my wife to call her people. Call them because she has forgotten she came from somewhere. Now that's the vision of a wise man. She has experienced a context before, and the context that you want to make available is to be better than the context the person grew up in. Now, if you look at a lady and you you begin to relate with her for three months. If you are a discerning personality, you should be able to know what is missing in the ingredients of the environment in which she was raised. Some, they were never loved. And because they were never loved, you will notice that they have little capacity to love. They might be wonderful fighters, especially in a polygamous setting. And so the person has a brilliant way of hiding away from reality, entering into a shell and operating and relating with people superficially. So that environment, even though them, there may be enough money, people might have gone abroad to school, but the person, the real person, is within a cocoon. It will take discernment to understand the kind of bruises that have been inflicted upon the life of a man or a woman that is as a result of the environment, the habitat in which they were compelled to grow. Everybody grows with scars that are, that are associated with the habitat of, of their craft. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. My mom was sick shortly after I was born. And because she was sick, and she was so sick that she had to be admitted in the hospital. And because of that, since I would need to be using breast milk, I was admitted along. Not because I was sick, but my mom was sick. Now, those early months, because the sickness took some time, those early months when I was in the hospital, I grew to become independent. Because most times you have to sleep and you don't have somebody to play with you. My own bed was in the hospital. And then she would just reach out to me to give me breast milk and all of that. 
and unconsciously I started becoming independent. So when we came from the hospital and came back home, I wasn't allowing people to carry me. I was very comfortable being alone, very comfortable being by myself. I remember, you know, those days in nursery school when they drop people from home and then the people will start crying and they want to go back home. I never had any opportunity to cry like that because the environment was shaping me and crafting me into a certain kind of man. Are you with me? At the age of 12, I had an independent mind that was so independent that the people around were afraid of what exactly will be the outcome of this kind of situation. And even though I had brothers at home that had, at, were far more advanced than I was in the areas of study that I was engaged in, I did not allow anybody to teach me. I normally told them that if you could study and understand it, me too, I will study. You see, that was not accurate, but it, it was as a result of my wiring. And the wiring we're talking about was actually malleable, and it was shaped by the environment and the context that I found. Mine. You can check it's just that we are a house. I've related with some of you closely. I can tell, I can use some people as an example. But it will not be good for this kind of context. If I relate with you, I will know the kind of environment you grew up in. The, the scar is upon you. It will take a wise man to design the symptoms of the environment on the developmental process and to create an environment that is better than the environment in which a person lives. That's the first. And this is vice versa. Are you with me? There's this guy, this guy, the guy, the dad, when the mom took him for the dad. Right? The guys from the village came to the dad and told him that the woman was a witch and forced him to cast her out. She gave birth to this boy. Started selling by the roadside. Took the guy to school did everything for him. He studied as an engineer. He was fortunate to work in one of our foreign oil companies drilling in the deep uh, shores of, of the Potakot Axis. The Potakot Axis. You need to take a helicopter for 45 minutes to arrive at the platform. He was an engineer there and he was exceptionally rich because he knows the thing. All right now, because of the efforts of his mother, he's so emotional about his mother. If you insult his mother, he can just start crying. He's a very strong man. Before he will fight, he will cry first. <laughs> because of the sufferings, and every month there's a commitment he makes to the mother just to see if he can buy back some of the years. And then the guy now got married to a lady. And this lady was not sensitive to his context. He felt that his intimacy with his mother was too much. And it was her duty to ensure that she breaks that yoke. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. You know what happened at the end of the day? She got cast out from the context. <laughs> She got cast out because she was not sensitive to understand the context. If she had understood the context, she would have given the woman, because the woman is not a witch. The woman is, is one of, is a deacon in redeem, right? She's not a witch. So there was no basis of contention. The counsel the woman gives the son are, are not evil. But she just felt that there was a competition because she could not discern the environment it grew even if you want detachment to take place, the way to do it is to create security, enough security, enough security in the environment that the guy will feel free, that you have accepted that which he loves. And in the process, with time, with time. You see, some of these things, emotions and alignment, it takes time to build. You need to be very wise, exceptionally wise, 
to become one with your wife in five years time five years of marriage you need to be very wise to achieve that within that time space and i tell you as a man that likes to feel that he's wise i like to feel so that i'm a wise man but you see in practicality because i've i have a diary that i documented my failures in marriage and how long it took from i knew what i wanted to achieve but i discovered i was limited in achieving it at the time i planned because some of the things you will need to mature in christ first for you to be able to create a kind of allowance that is required um, um for that environment to be created so the lady came fighting everybody fighting the mother she will run and go and sleep in another room just because the mother visits uh, the young man now saw the trend and before the fight began he drove her early enough and then she was passing from pastor to pastor asking for prayer you see it's easier for you to be wise than for you to seek prayer it's easier please help me preach to your neighbor it's easier whether you like it or not the person coming from a family and whether you believe it will happen or not there will be comparison whether the home you created is better than the home the person came from a wise man will make his own crucible better than the crucible that his wife came from very important that's number one hallelujah two a good marriage is a union of two good forgivers. I met my grandfather at old age. I was born, I was like um, five years old or thereabouts when I was introduced to my grandfather. Maybe because he was the chief of our, our clan. He was a very, very angry man. At old age, a man that is, because when I met him, he was like 99. A man of 99 could still get angry. And the anger is on him for like one hour, 45 minutes. He'll be shaking like this. A man of 99. So you can imagine when he was 25, what he would do. Now, at 99 years old, if my father wants to beat me and I run to him and I tell him, see, he wants to, he wants to stand up, he wants to do something. At 99 years old. Now, you know what I realized? That there's a spirit of anger in my family. Because eventually I found out that I was not too different from my grandfather. My own anger went to university. It's a modern anger. It's a refined anger. But it's as terrible as the crude anger of my grandfather. And guess what? My father too was a very angry man. If he gets angry, he can. Are you with me? So I became a pastor very young. Because I identified my calling quite young and I began to serve the Lord and the grace to teach the anointing to teach was on me early even at the age of 12 I could teach the Bible at least make some sense out of it so I felt because I was teaching the Bible and uh, I was probably counseling people at the age of 18 I was counseling married people so I felt I had <laughs> hallelujah until in marriage, I found out that my capacity to be angry was as hot as it was in the bowels of my grandfather. Then I realized I was not as good as I thought I was. And if your anger pushes you to talk, that's the worst anger. If you can get angry and not talk, we can say that's mild anger. 
But if your anger, if anger works in many ways. Some people's anger moves them to slap. That's how they express it. Hallelujah. Some others move them. He anoints them to talk and pass them. That's the worst one. Because with that kind of anger, you can wound a mortal soul. Then when you have finished getting angry, say everything that you have said. Then the anger now goes. And then you are still left to relate with the person. Many times you are going to go overboard. And the only thing that is going to sustain the relationship is that people have capacity to forgive. Obviously, as we grow more in Christ, we begin to get finer. And we will begin to get better. And we begin to handle several spirits until we knock them off. So it is expected that marriage should get better and better with time. But in order for you to survive and get to the point where it becomes better, you must have taken advantage of a particular infrastructure. First infrastructure is the ability to say sorry. And it can be so difficult an angry man lacks the capacity. There are sometimes if an angry man says sorry, it's as if he has died. Have you felt that one before? Uh, it means it's anger that is dying. You, are, you have delved a very deadly blow on anger. And that's why you felt it. Hi! It's as if you went sick. The ability to say sorry. And from the other end, the ability to forgive. There were several things I had to learn experientially. One of such things also was the ability to let go. You know, you can bruise somebody and the person remembers it in... Five years' time with the same pain. The fact that you remember it is not a problem. Because if there is a scar in your body, you remember how you got it. In my own opinion, there's nothing like forgive and forget. You still remember the event. But the thing is, the pain is no longer there. If the wound is healed, if you touch it, touch the scar, you will not feel any pain. Now, God taught me how to let go. And the way He did was that He facilitated my transfer from Makodi to Lagos. And then I'll have a meeting to go and preach. I'll would, I would, I would tell them, I'm coming to preach. I'm already preparing myself. I secured the message, fasted, prayed, prepared my spirit. And then when I'm at the airport to fly, a text message will come. Empty Poseidon just arrived, Lagos waters. So, so, so time. Make sure you are there to work on that vessel. I'll carry my bag, go back, call them, sorry, I can't come. When it happened like 12, 13, 14, 15 times, I now got used to it. How to let go. Some of you cannot let go. Maybe, maybe if I had the ability to let go, maybe God wouldn't have had to allow me to go to Lagos. If God wants you to let go and you refuse to let go, God has situations that he can place you that you were just. But those situations are more painful than the context you would have learned on. Hallelujah. So I learned how to let go. After six years of learning how to let go, I came back home. My wife said, this thing, this thing, this thing. I said, okay. Okay, lady. This one, this one, this one. I said, yes. All right. Then she noticed that I let go too much and it was not too much. My letting go was too much. You must learn how to forgive. You must learn how to. What? Even in pastoring, people will offend you. People that you labor on will begin to insult you, take your name to different places, discuss you among common people. If you don't have a heart to let go, you can't be a man of God. Marriage is very good. It gives you an up-to-date um, estimation of your level of compliance to Christ-likeness. Right? You, in marriage, you will see your capacity to forgive. In marriage, you will see what is wrong with you. Because your partner is dwelling within close range. Alright? I hope you now know that emotion is not love. You can be emotional about anybody. Even married, someone that is married, can be emotional about the person. 
Love is not a feeling. Love is covenant. You know, it has an unconditional tone. Whether you feel it or not, it is there. In love, your rights are reduced. Your rights are cut off. And you are expected to operate only one way. So your power of choice has been maligned. In love, you are bound by life. You are bound by death. It's more of covenant than it is an emotion. Meanwhile, anytime the emotion comes, enjoy it. When you like the guy, like him. But the time will come when it, you will hate him. But in the midst of hating him, love demands, which is covenant. It demands that you are still constant. Whether you have started liking him or whether you now hate him, your commitment to him is still the same. Now, in order for you to be able to prosecute this, you will need support from God. There are many times you find out that you lack the ability to, to forgive. Hallelujah. And you need God to help you to release. God to help you forgive. And you must not forget that the only way that God will help you to forgive is when you ask him to. So there's a lot of prayer that is in marriage. And this prayer is in view of obvious insufficiencies that you discover in the area of implementation of what is expected according to God's will. Marriage is for two forgive us. A wise man once said, be her medicine and not her headache. Number three, wisdom nugget. People stay married because they want to, not because the doors are locked. Help me preach that to your neighbor. People stay married because they want to, and not because the doors are locked. You will actually have many opportunities to bail out, to cut out. Hallelujah. Several events will suggest to you that the best thing to do is to bail out. But you must understand that you are going to remain in it because you choose to remain. Not because you will not have cogent reasons to have left at various points. Hallelujah. Now, so before you run off with a guy, study the guy very well. And then come to the conclusion of the fact that No matter any weakness this guy has, I will not leave him. I can't say that for him, for me, but I can say that for myself concerning him. Have that disposition. In our Lagos branch, there was a wedding that was conducted. And this wedding that was conducted, I sent Ogbe to go and conduct the wedding. And he did and came back and gave me a report of how it went. Two months into the wedding, the husband beats the wife silly, leaves her in the house, packs his load and leaves. She recovers herself in the middle of the night, seeks help, doesn't find, makes calls, then get help. She calls her parents, tells them what happened. They dash down, take her to the hospital. That's when she discovered that she's even pregnant, complicating the matter. You see, during the course of her courtship, she was 
shielding the guy from interrogation. You know, part of our business is interrogation. Because counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water. So a man of understanding, he draw it down. So she was shielding him from the normal interrogation that is required for us to design the spirit of a personnel. I was just quiet anyway. Meanwhile, we conducted our own findings and found out a track record of inconsistencies with the young man who brought it to her notice. I even sent one of us to her. Have you considered this? We found this, we found this, we found this. We went to the person's village, we went to this. This is what we discovered that he did here. Did this one here, did this one here, did this one here. Are you aware of this? You say yes, everything is under control. All right, um, thank you so much uh, for your time, and I hope the Lord speaks to you through this message. Don't forget to share, and don't forget to subscribe for more updates at Matoka TV Studio. All right, thank you, and God bless you. Amen.